Praised be Jesus Christ. It is not any longer that we believe, you and I who are here, because of what our parents have told us. It is not because of what our priests have preached to us. It is not because of what our teachers have shown us, no. Tonight we are here because we have come to know and to believe that this is truly the savior of the world. We know the gift of God. We know who it is that is saying to us tonight, give me a drink. Jesus, who will cry out on the cross, I thirst, says to the Samaritan woman and to us to give him the gift that he has given us, his, our faith. He thirsts for our faith, especially in times of crisis, and threat, he thirsts for our faith because he knows that you and I who have been baptized have entered into that water of faith and new eternal life satisfies us satisfies us with a gushing forth of strength that even in the face of pandemics and sickness and divorce and betrayal and unemployment, in the face of worry, in the face of failure, gushing out within us in our noonday tiredness is the Holy Spirit. And that spirit pours out on us tonight. And we receive with great joy his word that saves us, that tells us that the Messiah has come. Christ is with us. He has proclaimed all things to us. And now he teaches us the truth. What is the truth that undergirds this pandemic and our response? Humbly, we must say we are not certain. But there are signs within this moment that we of faith can see. The hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. For we worship what we know. And the hour is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. You and I, by God's grace, huh? you and I, are true worshipers. And we worship the Father in spirit and truth and know that what we taste here will be our eternity. And so we are not, we're not afraid. No, we are not presumptuous. We are not like someone tempted like Jesus was when he was put on the parapet and the devil said, toss yourself off, God will catch you. What did Jesus say? Do not put the Lord your God to the test. So let's not. No false, pious bravery. God's on my side, I don't have to worry. No bravado. Wash your hands, sisters and brothers. Wash them. Let us Keep a distance from each other, as hard and as awful as that is. 
But we know you and I, Christians, that there is no distance between those who are baptized into the living water, that spiritually we are united. And so while we keep distance, we must listen to our Holy Father, who says, never can it be shown that just because we listen to government officials, that we think like government officials. We think like a church. And that means we must attend deliberately to those who are isolated and lonely and are sick. There is no fleeing from them. We must pray for and support our healthcare workers, knowing that most of them will be contracting this COVID-19, the majority of them. We know that. We must pray for them. And we must be alert constantly to be a church that cares. It might come that tonight is the last public Sunday Mass in the Diocese of Saskatoon, right here. Could be. This church will not be closed, however, though there will be perhaps no public celebration of the Mass. I will celebrate Mass every day. And you, my people, are always with me in every Mass that I celebrate. As well, the Blessed Sacrament will be here, exposed for prayer, and we will let you know. Because Jesus is the one who anchors us in this journey. When the going gets tough, we, who worship in spirit and truth, go to God. Huh? What does the world do? It goes to Costco and goes shopping for toilet paper. Toilet paper. There's something in that. Oh, there's a lesson, a deep symbol. Our heavenly patron, St. Paul, writes, I have counted all things as so much blank compared to the great knowledge of knowing Christ. And the word that he uses in blank, sterkos, is the Greek word for the S word. Merda. Merd. Dung. Everything is just what you find on a baby's diaper compared to Jesus. And all the things of this world. This is a chance for us to look and say, yes, it is all toilet paper. It's flimsy. It helps for a bit. Might keep us clean and safe. But it does not last. The psalmist in Psalm 149 says, put not your trust in princes. Put not your trust in the science and technology that can lead us and learn, teach us how to be proper in caring for each other. But don't put your tr ultimate trust in that. Put your trust in Jesus, who has given us the gift of wisdom and scientific knowledge. You see, the sadness is, is that perhaps we will miss this moment of worshiping in truth. I pray not. As we recognize how close we are to each other, that viruses can bring sickness, so should we rejoice to know how much love can bring healing. How amazingly virulent love is. How powerful God's forgiveness is. We are vessels of that. And we learn that we have to protect our children and ourselves from all that is not of love. So our schools, as they close, must now learn to close their doors and their hearts to any technology that entraps our young people with addiction to dopamine bings on the web that makes them salivate like Pavlov's dog so that they become better and better consumers. We have to isolate from our young people and from anything that would damage their souls. Sexually transmitted diseases are at a plague level in our culture. When have you heard our government officials say, don't have premarital sex? Where have you heard our mavens of education teach our people, our young people, you have to socially isolate yourself. This is powerful. All this communication. We must learn 
we who are not afraid to witness the dignity of knowing how in love to protect each other. We are called to protect, especially in this time, our elderly. For it is they who disproportionately are affected by this pandemic. The numbers from Italy would show us that 4% of those who are contracted and express some of the symptoms will perish and almost exclusively they come from those 70 and older and also some 60 year olds, almost exclusively. That is who, those are who we must care for. Find ways of praying and feeding them and not leaving them isolated and vulnerable, but not being flagrantly, flagrantly violating our call to care for them by ourselves, knowing that if we're young, we're probably okay and we can go anywhere. No, now is our time to treasure our elders. And we do this, brothers and sisters, because Jesus gives us the grace to face anything. Put not your trust in princes? Of course not. Except for you, O Prince of Peace. For you live in us, and a spring of faith wells up in us. Now, as we're alone, help us to be alone with you. Help us, Jesus, not to fix our hearts and our minds on the constant outpouring of news that makes us more and more disquieted and renders us fearful and so able to be manipulated more and more by the powers of this world that do not know you. Jesus, help us to drink deeply of the water of your love in us. For Lord, though we walk in the valley of the darkness of death, we fear no evil, for you are there at our side. With your rod and your staff, you give us comfort. Lord, shepherd, healer, God, we hope in you. And Paul, patron of the inner city, our patron, teaches us tonight, hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.